Hello, YouTube. Today we're going to be taking a look at this uh, HP Enterprise uh, ProLiant Micro Tower or Micro Server Generation 8. It's a very compact little server. Comes equipped with a uh, socket 1155 Celeron G1620T. Uh, the processor will be upgraded uh, somewhere in the near future. I might get the CPU tomorrow, but maybe next Tuesday um, as of filming this. I've ordered a, uh, a core i3-3220, which is a 3.1 gigahertz, I think, uh, dual core with hyperthreading. It should give me a little bit more uh, CPU horsepower. Um, the system can take that uh, kind of wattage just fine. I was looking at uh, Sandy Bridge core i3s, but they were all 65 watts, and uh, the Ivy Bridge ones are 55 watts, so that should keep the uh, power requirement in check as well. So that's what's happening in the CPU front. Um, in terms of talking about front, uh, let's just take a little tour around the system before we get into uh, more details on this. On the front, we have two USB 2.0 ports that we can use for uh, bootable devices or uh, external storage, of course. And uh, we have the optical drive slot here, which uses some kind of proprietary system, I think. I've been inside here, and uh, it, it only has a floppy power connector to power. You can connect a separate uh, SATA cable to run up there. That'll work just fine, but uh, that's a little something to keep in mind probably won't be using optical in this anyway. I know opticals that I have that are even SATA is like a slot loading one that I uh, took from a uh, MacBook scam that uh, occurred about uh, two, three years ago. Um, anyways, I digress. Here in the front, we also have the power button, indicator lights for network and uh, storage. Here, of course, we have a door. It's full metal. It swings open and you get uh, four bays here. They're not hot swap bays. They're just uh, conveniently mounted, so you only have to take out four screws put in a three and a half inch drive and just slide in there. That works just fine. I've got an SSD in here, 30 gig uh, Kingston. It's uh, acting as a host cache right now. This system has limited RAM. And uh, this is a one terabyte Toshiba drive that I took from my desktop. This server will be replacing the Mac Pro as a whole. I will not be using that anymore as a workstation. Um, since I've decided to uh, apply a little bit of a workaround on my main system to run the Hackintosh partition anyway, Despite having a Pascal GPU, I actually fitted the GeForce GT610 that boots uh, natively into OS 10 El Capitan. Doesn't work on a Sierra, so so that's that. It uh, actually fit perfectly underneath my GTX 1060, so without interfering with the blower fan. So that's very good. Yeah. Anyhow, so we got four drive bays here. There are currently two of them populated. I will be taking out the Western Digital Drive that's in the Mac Pro right now, and uh, so used to serve my virtual machines. We will be taking that out, and uh, it will be wiped. I will not be transferring any data from it, I don't think. Maybe I'll just uh, use it to transfer some uh, virtual machines that I had on that machine. The management server is probably the only one I would actually save. I'm not going to save the vCenter virtual machine because it just hogs RAM. The vCenter appliance takes like 8 gigabytes of RAM to run, so that would be a waste because this server here can take 32 gigs of RAM, it can only take 16. Currently has four in it. We will be upgrading that in this video as well. Also, I got some. Uh, this is the little thingy for the ILO uh, credentials and shit, so I can use that to access the server remotely. And uh, in other things, we have a big ass fan here. This is a 140, I think. Uh, and in terms of ports, we get two gigabit Ethernet ports here. These are two USB 2.0 ports. These are two USB 3.0 ports. VGA, of course, for connecting to a monitor. And this is the ILO port for remote management. And here is a low profile PCI Express bracket. This can take an X16 card, so that's good. Power supply, I believe, in these is like 150 watts, I think. So you really just shouldn't put like a big ass graphics card in here. But if you decide to uh, use a uh, CPU like a Xeon without uh, dedicated graphics, or without integrated graphics, I should say, you need to uh, add dedicated graphics to the system. So, so there's that. It slides open pretty easily. Just take off the top, store that somewhere, and uh, now we can take a look inside the system so you can get a feel for what's inside when it is. I'll just uh, adjust the camera angle slightly. There we go. Here's the Delta power supply. It is. 190 watts. It's 190 watts. <laughs> That's some trouble reading there. So, this is pretty much all of the expansion that you're seeing on this side. Here is a micro SD card slot for booting from a micro SD card. Here's an internal USB port. 
if you want to boot from an internal USB stick like I am. The system is running ESXi 6.0 update 2. So I can use the web management UI from anywhere around the world. I just need to fill in my IP and the corresponding port number, and I can manage it remotely without having to have a VM in there for management. Um, it's pretty much regular PC hardware for the most part. There's regular uh, connectors. What I think is a very nice touch, though, is that the cables are sleeved from power supply. Pretty much all are. And that's just a very, very nice touch indeed. So yeah, up here, uh, is that floppy connector that I was talking about for the optical drive. That seems a bit weird to me. Pr I probably have to get a converter if I would ever use an optical in here. Chances are pretty slim though. Here is the SATA port if you want to connect the uh, optical drive at all. So, at least I think that's what it's for. And there's of course the X16 uh, expansion slot. And it's actually keyed for X16 it seems. It's pretty good. So, so that's that. Let's uh, flip it around, because on this side, the CPU heatsink is located right here. And here are the RAM slots. We've got two of these. And uh, this system will take uh, unbuffered DIMMs of the ECC variety. That's a bit uh, annoying, really, because this means that when you're buying RAM for the system, you need to buy Unbuffered ECC DIMMs, not registered. Registered RAM is really cheap on eBay. You can get like 8 gigabyte sticks for somewhere around like 20 bucks each. But for ECC unbuffered, you really can't find any, any good deals on eBay. You have to buy locally, at least in my case. Because I got two uh, Kingston sticks, actually these right here. Um, these were 40, I think 45 euros each. So I paid 90 euros in this for 16 gigabytes of DDR3. Uh, 1600L uh, ECC unbuffered. It doesn't need L, but it has L installed right now, so it takes anything that's like PC3 12800E. So there is that. So just opening it up so you can take out the original module. It flipped up conveniently. This is a 4 gigabyte stick PC3L 12800E. This is actually a single rank stick, but it takes dual rank, no problem, in theory. This is Kingston Premier, as it was uh, sold as. It's dual rank. This is actually it's not PC3. Oh, it's just regular PC3. That's just fine. 1.5 volt RAM is just fine. Due to an Intel chipset limitation, these things can only take one or yeah, these can only take uh, eight gigabytes per DIMM. It can't address more than that. So yeah, uh, in Skylake they upped the uh, limit per channel to uh, 16 gigabytes. That's one of the reasons that at least Apple claims uh, why the new MacBook Pro can only use 16 gigs of RAM. Not sure about that, don't really care too much, I'm not a customer for a MacBook Pro anyway. I have one, I know that, but I won't be upgrading from it. It will be going away as soon as I finish my Bachelor of Science which will be somewhere around next July, I'm assuming right now. Could be earlier, could be later, who knows. Most likely earlier though. So, so that's the RAM upgrade done. Um, next step is just uh, to put the case back on. So if I could find one, yeah, there it is. All right, it's very easy to work on this little system. It's very convenient. If only I wasn't such a clumsy dork. There we go. Very nice build quality. So yeah, like I said, this will be replacing my Mac Pro because it uses about, uh, even when the i3 is installed, about a quarter to like uh, a fifth of the power. Um, CPU overcommitment is a real thing in the ESXi world. In the Mac Pro, I had serious CPU overcommit. I had about 19 giga, uh, gigahertz, yeah, gigahertz worth of a CPU power, and I only used five at the very, very worst. So on that dual core i3 that I will be buying, I can handle the entire environment, and I still have two vCPUs left. So that's nice. So that leaves me about uh, six gigahertz of uh, surplus. That's what you want in this world. 
The only thing is, you'll never have overcommitment for RAM or storage. That stuff eats through really fast, especially RAM. Um, anyway, so I will be setting it up right here. Uh, we will be booting it up and we'll see if the RAM actually works. So let me just connect it up real quick and uh, we'll take a look. All right, I pressed the magic button. So now we just need to find out whether she is willing to come alive today. If I get any picture at all, that would be great. All right, that was the first power on. Let's give it another go. Sometimes it needs to warm up a little bit before we'll actually output any video. And I should, in theory, be smart enough to freaking plug in the VGA. Which I'm not. So, yep, it's working. Good. The only thing I really care about is whether I can actually have 16 gigs of RAM operational here. Because it's really difficult to find which RAM is actually compatible with this, uh, with this machine. I was just eyeballing that uh, any old PC 10,600 or 12,800 12, E RAM would work. And it appears that that is the case and I got to at least compatible RAM to some degree. It's probably not HP uh, smart memory I think is their technology uh, compliant but I don't freaking care. I'm not paying a premium to buy directly from HP Enterprise. It's not like I'm an HP uh, aficionado or anything. Yep, 16 gigabytes installed. The only thing this thing needs now is just some uh, some faster processor just to, for the heck of it. I mean, I got uh, the 3220 for like 25 euros, so that was a pretty good deal. I think the guy even shipped it to me uh, already, so I should have it by tomorrow, and if not, I'll have it by Tuesday. I will not be filming that process though, because I need to find out, figure out myself how to open this thing up. And I don't like learning on camera, because that usually means that I overlook something and then stuff breaks, and I really don't want to do that. <laughs> I've already put in about I've already put in 425 euros into this little server, so it'll all be worth it because the Mac Pro will be making up most of that money. Because Mac Pro one comma ones are still pretty valuable here in the Netherlands, so that should be good. There we go, it posted. Now we just need to wait a little bit. Now I just need to check if uh, VMware actually sees all of the RAM. And if everything is good, I will be moving this thing up to the attic, connecting it to the Ethernet line that I have up there. It is power line, like you sort of know, but, you know, it'll be fine. At least I think. For now, I'm just waiting here until uh, we get the splash screen so I can see whether the RAM is successfully detected by ESXi as well. VMware software can be a little bit finicky, so that's uh, something to take into consideration. This is a, a modified copy of ESXi 6.0. Updated it uh, yesterday. It's 6.0 update 2. So you get the uh, web UI, you can uh, have the proper web client without using uh, vCenter. And yep, we have 16 gigabytes of memory. That's good. So, well, yeah, that was a successful upgrade and tour of my uh, HP <clears throat> Excuse me, HP ProLiance Microserver Gen 8. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.